six o'clock, Walters. We'll start with you. Uh, the first thing I need to do is do a roll call. And so, uh, so I'm here. Here. Yes. I'm here. Um, Marshall Allen. Here. Uh, and Dorisky. Here. Um, Paul Meyer. Here. Phil Schultz here. Here. And I think we might have one missing now. Um, Walden. He's not going to be here. Not here. Okay. So, <coughs> one person is. Okay, you need to approve the agenda. Does anybody want to add or change the agenda as it's been submitted? I move to be approved, Mr. Presenter. I need a second. Second. All in favor to accept the agenda as submitted, say aye. 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 All opposed? Uh, we need to approve our uh, last uh, meeting's minutes. Anybody want to make any change to the last meeting's minutes? If not, a motion. Motion to approve as. Uh, second, please. Second. All in favor to accept the minutes as written. Second. Aye. Uh, All opposed? Motion is passed unanimously. I don't think there's anything to put here from the public. You went for the public? No. no. Um, we need the law professionals. To... <laughs> sure. <laughs> All right. We had a uh, fantastic month of April. Like, best on record. The best, the best on record we ever had was. Um, in 2022, where we got, I think, one score to nine, probably seven or something. Um, and we went ahead and beat that by 25,000. So it was, uh, it, and I'm sure Sam and Ryan are going to say this, but when, when the weather is just halfway decent, it doesn't have to be nice. <laughs> it was just halfway decent, we are busy. I mean, I, we, we had no place to put people yesterday. Oh. All day long, from 7 a.m. straight through until <coughs> I was I was at home 5:30, and there were still online bookings coming in for the same day. Oh, couldn't believe it. So it's really good. So yeah, 174, um, you know, projected at 91. So we will take a win there. And uh, round wise, what are we at here? We're still learning a new thing. Straight down. Yeah, straight down. Actual is 3302. So 3302, and great, we're down 100 rounds, and yet we're making more money. That's a beautiful setup for golf. So if we play a few less rounds, but we're making more money, that's, that works out good. And May is shaping up to be really good as well. So hopefully it, it finishes strong. We got one good week ahead of us. We always like when Memorial Day falls on Monday, the 29th. And then we get the full weekend. It's Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and Monday. So that'll be that's good for records. Of course, it's coming along real good. Ryan is doing a great job getting this uh, out of all the winter, the winter mess the air. Mother Nature's helping a lot too. All the, all the, all the, all the free water. Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> that, you know, a lot of the, a lot of a lot of you know golf course that had kind of suffered during the winter is coming back real fast. And, and Ryan is super proactive on getting out in front of things and seeing things. And so, any questions for Twin Peaks? No. All right. Ryan? Or who were uh, I would have to say the same thing that Pete really has said. When it's decent out, busy, when it's extremely nice out, it is a super. <laughs> it's, it's unbelievable. But, um, Sunset uh, April projected uh, for forty eight thousand. We came in revenue at seventy seven thousand. Wow. Um, about twenty two thousand ahead of last year's April numbers. Um, round wise, projected for thirty one seventy seven. Uh, actual rounds came in at thirty two forty five. Um, overall, we are now up in rounds for the year, sixty eight rounds ahead and. 2.1% ahead of last year. I have to say, I've never truly had to turn people away. 
until this year so far. And I, I tell my staff, I'm like, put squeezes in, add squeezes, but when we don't have enough space, and we know that the pace of play is going to be at almost a three hour round on a Saturday, Sunday, we have to start turning them away, unfortunately. But it's, it's been crazy. And I'm happy. Can't, can't argue with it, really. Any questions for me? Yeah. Well, they pretty much said it all. The demand for golf is truly amazing. It's, um, you know, prior to, prior to 20, we're coming up with all these great ideas and dynamic pricing being with us when we got to a part to create demand. And we're in a place now that we're just ending the demand. And it's just been really, really something. Uh, like Keith, Keith mentioned this past weekend, we filled every tee time from six o'clock until close to five o'clock full days. Every tee time, with some, with a few squeezes as well. We uh, about to turn people away with we'll ten minute tee intervals. It gives us the opportunity to actually do that. So we throw in a few extra squeezes here and there, and, and it's uh, two hundred sixty two rounds on Saturday and two hundred eighty one on Sunday, which is really really amazing. <laughs> it's been great. Uh, really fun. Um, I ran you know, the, the weather's been kind of tough this uh, this month, obviously, when the weather operates is great, but I ran a report um, month to date, we're at like 197,000 um, for May, and yeah, last year we were at um, 261, so we're about 64,000 behind. Um, well, 64,000 to go. I think we'll get there. Uh, at least it still needs to bang. Another extra five thousand or so, and then if the weather cooperates, I think there's no problem uh, achieving prior year's numbers. Uh, not only is the demand for just regular play good, but tournaments as well. Uh, this might be the first year that I've actually turned the tournaments away. It just uh, we have twenty three tournaments there, besides our men's club and. Um, Corporate and fundraising events, 23. It's, uh, it's really unbelievable. And um, there's just been a few where it didn't quite make sense. I, I figure with the demand we have, we'll, we'll just go with our regular play. Uh, it's been good. Any questions? Okay. Communications. Uh, oh, there's a. Uh, Okay, so we were going to cover this last month and had challenges, so we'll cover it this month. And if anybody has questions, please interrupt. Um, so, the golf fund, if you could go to the next slide, the golf courses are <coughs> an enterprise fund, all of the, the revenues and expenditures that uh, come in golf are under this fund. Um, the only tax support that uh, golf receives is for the bond election that was passed in 2018 to build the uh, Hugh Creek uh, maintenance <coughs> facility and replace irrigation here at Twin Peaks and at Sunset. Otherwise, everything that we can spend has to be generated through our fees and charges. Uh, next slide. Uh, quick uh, overview of, of staffing. We have uh, in, in golf a total of 11.15 uh, staff. Um, 0.4 of my salary as recreation and culture director is under golf. The other is in uh, recreation. Uh, Danny Sharon, who works three quarter times, salary is in here. And then everybody else that works in golf in the maintenance side, which uh, those, those staff work for Ryan or for Dan. And then we also have the three contracts that we manage with the golf pros. They, they are, they're listed here just for, to demonstrate that they're part of golf, but they are not employees 
uh, of the, the city. They are uh, all contracted. Many of the people that you see working at the front counters or out with the carts are either employees of the golf pros or they're volunteers that volunteer for Orion, Keith, and Sam. Um, we have uh, a total of 31 seasonal or temporary people that, that help our uh, staff that uh, take care of the golf courses. Ryan, how many acres is, is Twin Peaks? Uh, Twin Peaks is 100 total acres and Sunset is 42 total acres. And Dan? We're about 250, including the native and everything. So, yeah, we spread out quite a ways. So a lot to take care of with uh, really a, a limited staff. Um, and, and then they also uh, take care of the clubhouses as well and the parking lots. Uh, next slide. So golf operations for 2023, we have uh, budgeted revenue of almost 2.9 million. We have expenditures of 3.3 plus in the three golf courses. This is for the operational uh, budget. It does not include any of our capital uh, replacement or capital projects that we work on. That number for revenue is very conservative. Last year, if, if you look at the the report that the pros just uh, went through, we had revenue in, in 2022 of just about $3.8 million. Um, we really anticipate that that money, that, that revenue will come in at least at $3.5 million this year. And if, if golf continues like it is, it, it could beat the $3.8 million if, if again, the demand continues like it has been. So what's the intended to set the conservative project? It, if, if all of a sudden it, it rains all of June and July, it protects us from, from being overly aggressive. Um, that money can only go to golf. So if, if we shoot uh, the 3.8 million like we did last year, that just goes into the golf fund. It cannot be used any, anywhere else. Um, next slide. The, uh, and we'll talk a little bit more uh, towards the end, but these are the, the projects that were approved in 2018, um, maintenance facility, irrigation, and uh, rehab of satellites out of New Creek. And again, we'll come back to that. Please remember that 5.7 number as we move forward. We might come back to that slide. Uh, go ahead. For capital for this year, we have $15,000 uh, budgeted to uh, work on cart pass. Um, we'll probably do work at U Creek on number 11, right, Dan? Yep. To finish some of the work we began earlier. Uh, 204616 as part of the golf buildings rehab. The biggest part of that number, which was 130000 was to help repair the uh, retaining wall off of Pace Avenue. Or Pace Street, excuse me, that are passed by 11. 11 as well. Yeah. And that, that was failing. Fortunately, Public Works went in and did uh, work on that last fall. That work uh, has been holding very well, and there's a good possibility that we won't need to spend that money on, on the Pace project. And that will come back uh, to be able to do projects uh, within golf itself. And then the 1.6 million in irrigation, that is money that's coming from the public improvement fund to go towards the irrigation projects. If you could go back to the bond projects and Ryan and Dan jump in here. Last year when we went to bid for the irrigation here at Twin Peaks, um, we were $1.6 million over budget just for 
Twin Peaks. We went back out hoping that uh, we would get some, some savings uh, by doing two projects at once and uh, being able to have that company stay in town rather than relocating and having to come back to do Sunset. So again, we added 1.6 million, so we have for Twin Peaks Irrigation, 4.7 in round numbers. Uh, that bid for Twin Peaks and for Sunset this year came in at 6.9 million. So we are currently negotiating with our one bidder to see if we can um, come, come at least into uh, a bid of, or a budget of around 5.3 to 5.4 million. Um, we met with them, it's been almost a month ago, and are waiting for their response. We, we feel like that day we were able to do some negotiation, uh, but it's not official until they provide us the, the proposal in writing. Has so, the contract term been given? No. No? No. Have you thought about going out for a bid? Well, we did go off for a rebid. This was the second time <coughs> it, since May of last year we rebid, and we were that much over. So Twin Peaks alone had from May of 22 until March of 23, the cost had gone up $900,000. Oh, okay. And so we we need to do something. If we wait another year or until the fall, it's only gonna continue to go up. So it's really our hope that we can negotiate to get some work done yet to, this fall. Same kind of situation with uh, U Creek Maintenance Facility. Uh, we went to a bid, that bid opening was in April. The bids came in 1.4 million uh, over budget from what we had done in cost estimates last year. Um, we'd actually taken 1.5 million from carryover to help make that project happen. And again, now we're 1.4 if you add um, the carryover or contingency that we would need, uh, we're really about 2.2 million uh, over budget on that project. We're doing some negotiation with the two bidders um, and seeing if we can uh, cut out one of the buildings and only do the maintenance building. We're considering doing only one bay instead of, instead of two bays with the uh, maintenance facility and doing more of a what I would call a lean-to building for storage equipment where it wouldn't be enclosed, but it would at least be able to get us um, with equipment underneath uh, some some type of rain and snow protection. So, so carport style? Yeah, yeah. Again, waiting for responses and, and working with our purchasing division uh, to move <clears throat> towards trying to do that it would be our hope that we would be able to make some real decisions by, by June. Uh, next slide. The other issue, uh, next one please. The other thing that, that we're really experiencing is everything in the operational side of, of doing business is, is going way up. Just to give you an example of what we paid for in uh, seasonal golf carts, which are carts we rent from October 1st until September 30th thereabouts. They're supplemental to what I'm gonna talk about next, but just their cost went from 35,000 uh, a season to 64,000. And then if you could go to the next slide, this gives you an example. We were doing uh, a cart lease from 2000 and 18 until 2022 for the golf carts at uh, U Creek. That that rental or that lease cost went from $55,000 annually to $99,000, almost $100,000. And the only thing we did differently in those golf carts is that we went to lithium batteries. Um, we, we feel like uh, we're going to get some better longevity with that. Um, we did sign a five-year lease. 
So when our golfers go to the golf course and see that uh, golf rental rates went up from what they were to what they are now, I've, I've just had a 15 to 18. 15 to 18. That, that is about a 22, 20% increase in, in the cost. This is closer to uh, 50 to 60% increase. So we understand that, that we have a market that we're trying to appeal to with our, with our golfers, and we couldn't raise our, our rates enough to cover the real cost. So we felt like we needed to do that in bite size uh, portions. Um, we feel like uh, next year there'd be another probably a 10% uh, increase to try to at least try to cover that. And then uh, if you could go to the next slide, Brian. Um, the, the other thing is the cost of, of wages. In 2021, we were paying most of our temporaries, and this is just temporaries right now. Temporaries were being paid between 15 and uh, 15.50 per hour. Last year, um, we were really struggling across the city with trying to hire temporary employees. Um, city council was uh, gracious enough to to listen to the issues that we're having with hiring temporary employees, and they increased the. Uh, minimum wage from 1280 to 1550. They also agreed in 23 to raise that number to 1640 41. So anyone that's starting within golf as a temporary is starting out at 1641. And then we pay some stipends or higher amounts, uh, if you will, for years of service and, and different experiences. So the cost of, of our wages uh, have gone up by, you know, $220,000 just to be able to, to staff at the level that, that, that we need to do. These two items, just the, the golf carts and the wages, are just examples of, of things that, that I'm probably preaching to the choir at this point. If, if you are going to the grocery store or if you're going out to eat, you're seeing these same things and golf is no different. Everything that we, we do is costing a lot more money. Um, just to give you an example in, in fleet costs, and I don't remember if we have a slide on this or not. Yeah, if you would. Um, no, but for fleet in 2023, we had um, $320,000 budgeted to replace uh, equipment. That equipment came in seventy-six to eighty thousand dollars higher than what was budgeted, and so we had to go through an appropriation to be able to buy the equipment or afford to buy the equipment that that we needed to buy for this year. The other issue that is going along with that is lead time. We haven't even gotten 2022 equipment, all of our equipment, let alone any of our equipment for uh, what we're buying in 23. So it, most of that equipment will not come in until May of 2024 at the earliest. So there's all these lead time things that we're also uh, having to deal with uh, across the, the operation. So that's if you could go to the so that's just kind of a, a summary of where we're at in the golf operations um, we did raise our uh, green fees um, by two to three dollars uh, i believe it was over depending on whether it was nine holes or 18 holes we increased also the, the cart fees we increased the uh, range balls the one thing that we didn't do in an effort to try to be loyal to our, our existing customers is that we did not raise any of our passes or any of our 10 punch uh, uh, fees for the range to try to be loyal to them. 
we're not going to be able to afford to do that again next year. So in 2024, you will see passes and and those areas going up as well. We we did raise the use fees. The use yes, fees. We just yes. didn't raise the purchase price right. of passes yeah. or the premium passes and punch cards yeah. for the rate passes. Yeah. But yeah, you're right. You can expect to see the uh, purchase prices go up next year. So that's just kind of a quick summary of budget. Does anyone have questions or comments or thoughts? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, do you do the budget? Yes. Do you have to go to the long one to see board? Um, yes. Yes. Yep. So, so what happens if, like, you know, you got we had the, the budget and we, and we exceed the budget? Are you under some kind of Yes, that cannot happen. So what what we as staff are required to do is in the example that I gave for fleet where we were eighty thousand <laughs> over what was budgeted. So we have to go what is through is, is a pro appropriation where we have to explain to city leadership why we need to have the additional money and then that has to go to city council to be approved to be able to spend the money any money that um, the city spends has to be approved and appropriated according to budget law within the state and if we don't do that there is a potential of serious issues that could come back and we take that money from fund balance to appropriate. But, it, but it's quote our, like, our money, right? I mean, it's, it's golf money. It's, it's going, not tax money. You know, it's all for those items other than the bond projects, all of that is golf money. So why why did you go so conservative on the budget? I mean, it looks like you already know you're going to have to well, Go back and ask or tell somebody <coughs> to be well, the, the well, it's about the budget, it was concerned about the uh, revenue. revenue side. Oh, the revenue side. Yeah. Oh. So, oh. Just, just so you're aware, I'm acting like I know a lot about budget. I know a lot now because we've gone through all the process. When I had to submit the budget was a year ago. So, I had to do what was our best estimate. Right now, um, on Friday, I did the same thing for 2024. Use my best estimates based on what I know today of what our budget would be for next year. And and the whole cost thing is is finally starting to level out, but it was it, it's been ridiculous over the last two plus years. Well, it's, it's tough to guess what the weather's going to be, how many people are going to show up, yeah. Yeah. Uh, what tournaments you're going to get that are going to be committed. Yeah. There's no guarantee on that kind of No. And I looked really smart when it was February and March when it was snowing and raining there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 And, and really, part of April was, was not all that good. And then to get the April report and see that we've caught up, not only caught up, but passed last year which was our one of our best years in golf history is is just says a lot to how much people are committed to golfing in Longmont and how much they like the product and the services that these folks are providing. So it's it uh, really says a lot about that. I also say that when somebody doesn't get to go out and play for two months because of weather, yeah. it doesn't matter they are gonna go wherever as fast as they can get. Yep. And yep. Their, that those that are local and local courses are going to say, I'm going to go here right now because I know I get on and know, I know what's going to happen there. Yeah. I don't have to worry about I'm going to go well from here or where I'm going to that. So there, that's, a, I think, a big benefit of everybody knowing what's at each of the courses that are local there. Yeah. yeah, the weather this winter certainly made people hungry to play golf. And, and then you have challenges like Dan dealt with an inch and a half of rain Thursday afternoon. Mm -hmm. he, he could and, 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 
yeah, he could have showed you the the new river that is in Walmart. <laughs> yeah, it would have passed, but yeah. 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 I have I have video of eighteen. It was it was a twelve foot <laughs> plus wide river in between the fairway and my parents' house. Yeah. It was the same apartments right there on piece seven. Yep. I drove by there on Thursday. Well Thursday was when it came down on Friday. 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 Friday afternoon to what? There was still six to eight inches of hail. Standing uh -huh. in that ditch, it was right there. It was the same. We had a meeting out there Friday morning, and the Safeway parking lot. It looked like it had had a snowstorm. On. Right, right. That was, yeah. it was crazy. And, and we got, we didn't get anything uh, like that at sunset. Uh -huh. I don't think. Yeah. No, it stopped here. basically at last year. Yeah, because yeah. I was driving across town from yep. Holver. Over uh -huh. to on Seventeenth, and as I soon as I hit Lashley, it started started getting mm -hmm. hail. And by the time I got to my house, which is just past pace, yeah. we had hail everywhere. Yeah. We had a we had a sprinkle of hail, but other than that, yeah. I had a bolt of lightning drop down by the park in, in the parking lot as I was leaving. Just dropped right next to the truck, and literally everything on me just stood straight up. I was like, "Oh, baby, we got four months of old books." Any other questions on the budget? <laughs> I kind of covered that at the same time. Yeah. Uh, any, any questions on the bond project? Uh, I from the staff. I do have one question. So we were scheduled to meet again in June. Wanted to know what your thoughts are about meeting in June. I cannot meet in July, so. If we don't meet in June, it would be August would be for our next meeting. So if you're available, I think it would be good to have a, a June meeting. Sorry, Keith. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I contact going with everybody. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's it's summertime. Summer 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 summer. Summer. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Busy month for us. Yeah. Right. So, so right now, June is scheduled. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So do we need a motion? No, no, I just no, wanted no, to no, make no, sure you have that on your calendar <coughs> for June. Any items for the board? Yeah, the yes, real quick. I don't have to in August if for the record. Will be another family vacation quote. In August? In August. In June. Okay. I'll be out of time for September. Okay. <laughs> Any other items for the board? I have a motion to adjourn. So made. Second. Second. Motion's been made to adjourn the same thing. Can you call it say aye? Aye. All opposed? Yeah. The motion of that sign unanimously. Good meeting, Mr. Chairman.